Good morning. It is such a great day to have synchronicity. I am so excited to be meeting with our next guest. We are meeting with Nicole, CEO and founder of DNA Therapy. Nicole, good morning. Thank you for meeting with us today. How are you? I am doing well, and thank you for having me as well, too. Yes, ma'am. So tell us about yourself and tell us all about your practice. Okay. Um. I'll start with just my practice first, and then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my practice is called DNA Therapy. Um, I'm a person that loves acronyms. And so with DNA Therapy, it actually um, stands for Delete Negativity Always. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, hence the, you know, the DNA of what we're made of. Um, and then also, you know, I love the concept of just like Amazon, you know, they have so many different types of businesses. And so mm -hmm. with being a single mother, I wanted to be able, you know, to leave a legacy. And so the D actually stands for my son's first name, which is Dylan. And then the mm -hmm. NA is Nicole Atkinson. So with that whole, um, you know, concept that basically that just creates the whole name. And so, you know, that's kind of like our, our little thing together that, you know, if there will be, which I hope there will be other, you know, businesses that we're just going to add that little stamp to it, the DNA. That's um, right. So it, yes. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that explanation. Because when I was um, reading up on your business, I was like, DNA therapy. I said, <laughs> Does this have anything to do with like health and science and all of that? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was so Yes, I was so intrigued. <laughs> Yes, I get that so much. Um, but, you know, I wanted something to stick out, but just something to, to you know, just include him. And I, I will say I'm a very optimistic person, too. So it just all around it just, you know, when you you try to work on creating things and you feel like it speaks to you, it just it spoke to me. And so that's why um, I kept the DNA therapy and then the creative um, solutions is just to add on different unique um, solutions. You know, when you're thinking about the field of therapy, I don't always want to do like the same route of just necessarily sitting across from people. Um, I've incorporated also like EMDR therapy, which um, is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Um, and I can always, you know, explain that a little bit more, but just different things, you know, holistic other things, too, is what I want to add on to the, the creative part. Because when you think of therapy, it doesn't always have to be just one way, you know. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I definitely love that. And that name is very grabbing because it grabbed me. So um, really you. good. One. So, Nicole, give us your perspective on trauma. Right. And and let us know, in your opinion, and what you've seen working with clients, what are some of the effects of trauma? Well, you know, what I learned, I learned about um, trauma, I would say, during being in the work field. And so what I learned about trauma, I was um, a social worker, actually, with social services. So um, I worked with, you know, doing case management. I work with um, children's and families. And I did actually child protective services for um, a long time, a very long time. Social services, probably like 12, 12 plus years there. And so what I learned from trauma is that, you know, it basically starts within the womb. You know, those those things that we feel like affect us, you know, like when we think of trauma, you know, we think of war, we think of um, uh, car accidents. We we always think so of, of those main things that obviously happen in the environment. And that's still true, but it still is mainly, you know, what happens inside of us. So it's mm -hmm. that basically that emotional pain. So mm -hmm. we're, we're affected by the outside, you know, things, our environment, but with trauma, um, again, it starts within the womb. And so working with child protective services, we would do all sorts of, you know, assessments. We would ask like, how, you know, how was your birth? How was the prenatal care? What were things that happened? And so when you think about trauma and how it affects, it basically gives you, you know, an imprint, you know, whenever you experience a severe stressful um, incident, um, it can be overwhelming and it causes confusion you know, with children's, it, it changes, you know, the development sometimes of your brain, the cognitive um, functions as well. 
it it changes so much that you don't necessarily see everything how you would normally see it. So a lot of the positive reinforcements, a lot of those healthy connections, you know, we basically go straight to our animal side of the brain and, you know, a, a lot of hyper vigilance where we go, you know, straight to the fight, flight or freeze. So it affects us so much that, you know, the whole thing of, of when we're coming into this world and we're trying to make those healthy connections, when we're trying to, um, you know, be able to, you know, flourish and connect with people, it just makes it so, so difficult. And for kids, you know, we're coming into the world where we have to depend on adults in order to survive. So it just confuses a lot of things. Um, and it can affect our immune system. I mean, just the overall negative impact. So um, it's definitely something serious. And it's definitely something that we want to be able to um work through and cope through with hopefully utilizing therapy mm -hmm. yeah really good and that was such a good segue because the next thing i was going to ask you about is give us some perspective and some ideas on how trauma affects children right and so so for me i'm a trauma therapist and i work mainly with adults and we get to talk about and and discover together how this specific trauma has affected you know this adult and how this has affected their brain and um, how they've been coping with it and better strategies to cope better. Now with children, how would you say trauma affects children in the young brain? Well, it, it still goes back to, you know, like I said, with children, you know, we're coming into the world, we're trying to learn how to survive. And those close relationships are usually coming from, you know, our caregivers. Mm -hmm. And so you know, when you're thinking of like Eric Erickson stages, you know, the eight stages of um, development, it messes with our trust. If we can't necessarily trust the person, then, you know, it's going to be able to affect, you know, how we develop it, you know, mm -hmm. develop, I'm sorry. And so when you think about kids, it's really hard for them to be able to, to flourish because, if they don't have that safe place, it's always going to instill that fear. And so it's going to affect them being able to see that world as something positive. You know, they're going to, especially with the kids, you know, I work with children and I work with adults. So it is hard to try to challenge, you know, some of their negative thoughts because of the abuse or neglect that they experience. You know, mm -hmm. this is what they know and this is kind of what they see um, experiencing a lot of, um, the abuse and, you know, neglect that they've had for several years. And so it's hard to try to change that view sometimes. So it does affect, you know, their stages of development. It does affect how they, they view things a lot, I would say. Yeah, really good. And so thinking about that, why would you say therapy is important, especially for the BIPOC community? Yeah. Therapy to me is just, overall important i think everybody needs a a, a safe place mm -hmm. um again when you're coming into the world you know we're really trying to get you know to understand ourselves and when yeah. you connect you know with others or when you experience you know trauma you lose practically all that like i said it brings the confusion and so therapy is a way to be able, you know, it may not be but that 60 minutes, but it's a way to be able to focus on yourself for that self-discovery, for mm -hmm. you to kind of reconnect with yourself, you know, to figure out like who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it does help, I would say, as far as with, you know, at least understanding what healthy relationships look like. It's going to help you with communication as well. Um, and again, just to to trust to trust others if you have been affected where you don't have those healthy relationships and you have that safe place where you know you're sitting across with someone who is not going to be necessarily biased they're not going to be judgmental and you know accept you for you and help you figure out who you are wanting to be and just to find your purpose so that's why i like therapy is you know if i don't necessarily have a person in my family or i don't necessarily have a person you know um, who is considered like, you know, my friends, because sometimes being able to connect with, with those people, you know, they're not necessarily th those people that are going to understand you, you know, we're, as we get older, we're going to always change and they don't always give the best advice either. So <laughs> and they're not often unbiased, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
highest opinion. Um, yeah. So you yeah, definitely. What Nicole? What are some positive outcomes you've seen um, with being a therapist and working with clients? Um, well, I would say you know the positive outcome I see is it still goes back to just um, that self discovery. So with mm -hmm. me connecting um, again, like I said, I I see children. And, you know, I see adults, but I'm not going to lie. My niche is usually connecting with women. So just for me, seeing, um, you know, them to be able to flourish, for them to figure out who they are, their identity and follow their purpose. And it just it goes back. It just connects back to that childhood of, you know, them being able to understand who they originally were. So being able to to see that that's always just a positive thing for them to you know gain that confidence that self love working on their healing journey i can say that's truly a positive impact and for them to be able to communicate their boundaries a lot of us we do not we think we we communicate and we tell people our boundaries but we really don't we're not clear and concise when it comes to our boundaries at all yes i see that all the time in session is it's such a um I don't want to say a pet peeve, but it's just a, a barrier that I want to break through is individuals understanding what boundaries are and honoring their boundaries and being okay with it. You know, yeah. and you bring the, the word boundaries up in session and people face this kind of cringe, like it's a yeah. it's an ugly word, you know, and I said it's healthy. It's healthy to have boundaries, it's healthy to honor your boundaries, right? And let's figure out why. That's not happening. So yeah, that's that's a, <laughs> that's a big one for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it still just goes back to how you know how we are raised. Um, you know, a lot of people I hear it so much. You know, I don't want to. You know, basically feel like you know I'm being selfish. I don't want to mm -hmm. be looked at conceited. You know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. no, a boundary is necessarily saying no. You know, mm -hmm. and it's focusing on you know our non-negotiables, which you know. Yes. Our non-negotiables are important things. We need to have certain things because it's it's nothing wrong with, you know, being caring and being empathetic, but you know, just allowing people to just walk all over you, it's it's gonna have a negative impact, you know. Yes. Definitely. Yes. You know, and talking about women, I've hear I've heard women say in session, well, I just want to be liked. I want him to like me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be and I'll just be like, oh, just like you said, <laughs> you're not negotiable. Why are you doing this? You know, yes. and, and trying to help them to understand how important their no is, right? And if someone um, does not want to be with you or be in your life because of a boundary, do you need them there in the first place? So. Exactly, because it still goes back to you being yourself, you know, and you being authentic. And that's what you you are needing. You know, a lot of parents, you know, when you're parenting a, a child, most parents are like, I, I want my child to be successful. You know, we see the children as, as kind of... Um, you know, uh, a reflection of ourselves. So if that child is doing good, that's what we see. So success. But really, when you're trying to parent, you know, we want to parent a child that, you know, is at least seen, is heard, that they have self-love, that they're able to come out, you know, in this world to know who they are and to mm -hmm. be able to, you know, to to flourish. And we don't really have that because a lot of us are focusing on other people's opinions of how mm -hmm. they're going to view us. So mm -hmm. when it comes to us just knowing who we are, we don't. It's more focused to, okay, how can I get this person to like me versus me liking me or me loving me? It's always um about... You know, the view of of society and how others you know perceive us. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a whole chat just on that alone. Yes, I love it. I love it. Being authentic is such a big one. All right. So circling back a little bit, um, talk to us about EMDR and how you utilize that in treatment and why that's effective in treating trauma. So um, again, EMDR, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. Um, it was known for those who were actually in the military. And so it's a bilateral stimulation that's used in order to help like release, um, release trapped emotions. 
And so with that, it's a technique. A lot of my um, patients, they think, oh, you're doing hypnosis on me. But I'm like, no, it's it's a technique where you use like your hand movements and it allows you to um, have your patients, they follow the hand movements. So your eyes are going back and forth. And with that, that kind of creates the same feel of um, REM sleep, rapid eye movement. Mm -hmm. And so with that, you know, you utilize that because in REM sleep, that's when we kind of process the most, you know, a lot of our dreams, you know, in the subconscious world, they may not always seem like we know what they are, you know, at times, but it's a lot of our suppressed emotions usually occurs during, you know, REM sleep. And so with EMDR, it's basically your 50% in the mind and 50% in the room. And so it is done on your left side, which is the logic side of your brain, in hopes to kind of allow you to fully process some of those trauma experiences or some of those things that we ruminate a lot about that may create, you know, depression or anxiety. So it is, I'm not going to lie, it's heavy work. I had to do it. So I'm the type, if if I do something and it, it works, like, then I'm going to, you know, share it. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do the same thing my patients are doing, too. So um, I guess another way to explain it, um, I always tell my people, like, with EMDR versus psychotherapy, outpatient therapy. Psychotherapy, if you look at it, it's kind of like a map. So me and my patient, we're we're working together and we're looking at a map. We're looking at your whole life story and we're like, okay, this can kind of affect this and this can kind of affect this. With EMDR, it is a GPS. So if Mm. you get stuck and we're like, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm receiving all these emotions. I don't know why I'm numb, you know once I do that, it's going to bring up an image, a thought, or a feeling. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's as if a person was kind of there. So when it brings up like that image, it goes back and it really goes straight back to when they had that initial experience, when they had that trauma and it'll show you. So it would definitely show you that, um, the reason of probably why you project, you know, how you were feeling towards your boyfriend, your husband, your your friend, your homegirl was more than likely because of this reason right here. And so that's why I like it, because not everybody is going to be able to talk in a session. And so yeah. it helps being able to kind of do that. And that kind of opens up the window of self-discovery. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So do you feel like you get to outcomes quicker? using EMDR because in typical talk therapy, you know, that's a journey. We got to go back, we got to go in the future, we got to go in the present, so we got to figure out some stuff. But with EMDR, if I'm understanding correctly, you kind of, you're able to go back to them traumatic um, memories and, and understand why you may be feeling this way or projecting this onto someone or, or ruminating um, on certain thoughts. So do you feel like you get to outcomes quicker using EMDR? So yes and no. If EMDR is consistent, then I would absolutely say yes. Because it's heavy work, I, I have that, I have, you know, that love and hate relationship about me that my my clients are coming to me are like, uh, because it's bringing up stuff that they may have thought that they didn't know about. It doesn't bring back your memories, but these are suppressed things that we may have forgot about. And yeah. so you know, if I'm processing something, I can give you just like a, a small, you know, um uh example like if i'm processing you know somebody being scared of you know dogs or Mm -hmm. just something like that you know because that's things too that we can process but it comes up where it could be a severe traumatic you know experience maybe related to sexual abuse maybe related to domestic violence like that person wasn't mentally prepared necessarily for that and so with that sometimes those outcomes obviously aren't what we expected because i'm thinking that okay let's process this this could be a little trauma you know when it came to you being scared of a dog um it does set some people back because that fear creeps back in and it's not Mm -hmm. something that they necessarily want to relive and just as you know you know being a therapist i would have to meet them where they are so i'm never going to force it but um i would say you know yes and no because i do get people that they're like okay i'm good let's just finish talking versus (laughs) continuing that process Yeah. yeah That's amazing. How was it for you when you when you went through the process? Right. You said it was heavy. How was how was going through EMDR, especially as a clinician? How was that for you? 
Yeah, I would say it was it was the same. It shows you, you know, your natural defense mechanism, the ways that you distract. So, you know, sometimes in those sessions, you know, I, I can get a little sleepy or tired. So that's something that it shows me that, OK, you know, when I'm going through something that I can lay down, you know, that, you know, I may not always think about it. I'm going to go to sleep. So it, it still leads to that self-discovery and it'll show you um, things. And I can say definitely after that, um, I always tell people, you know, when it comes to the healing journey, it's a never ended story. So definitely after um, getting trained with that, it was another level that it basically opened up for my healing journey too. So it was other things. I'm like, you know what? I forgot about that. You know, yeah. <laughs> I gotta I go talk. Yeah, have a talk with you know my mom and dad. See what's mm -hmm. up. You know, in regards to that. But um, yeah, definitely heavy work though. That sounds so amazing. Definitely, <laughs> really good stuff. So thinking about mental health, right, and its access. How accessible do you think um, mental health care is to? Um, the black and brown community what's your opinion on that um i would say I, I feel that we do have resources and this question is going to take me right back to like when i was at social services um me working at social services i have plenty of other friends who are social workers so i i feel like we have resources, but sometimes I feel like they're not always distributed out to us. We we don't necessarily know everything. Um, even with working, you know, at social services, a lot of people that would come to me, they're like, oh, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this. So there's resources out there, but not everybody necessarily receives the information. And then also when we receive it too, I think in our you know, our community too, it, it just depends on that fear. Are we going to actually, you know, accept that this is the resource that we can utilize? And are we going to go forth with, you know, being able to utilize this to help us more? There's some fear mm -hmm. there of even, you know, getting better sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. say hand in hand, I feel like we, you know, now with technology and, and definitely when COVID came, it opened up. I, all I heard was like mental health, mental health, work on yourself. I heard that mm -hmm. so much because we were we were sitting still. And I'm always a person that, um, you know, when you sit still, you're going to get more clarity, clarity of things. And so I feel like that was a time where it just opened up a lot of doors, a lot of resources. I do see more people, you know, like us that are getting and receiving services, even more men, too, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, you know, mm -hmm. even more men um but i will say it still kind of goes hand in hand because sometimes when we get that you know those resources it's not always um you know given to us um and then also we still have that fear there yeah. so kind of yeah. yeah really good and like you said covid tell me if it was the same for you mental health care did seem to explode but in a different way i yeah. feel like Telehealth became so much more widely accessible and accepted, right? And so I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and now I can see a client that is in Hershey, PA, or that is way up in Bloomsburg, PA, which, you know, they may have been looking for a therapist of color and maybe in their community, we weren't. Um, there wasn't many of us, but now that there, there was this boom of telehealth, now they could say, oh, okay, well, you know, she's in PA and I'll see her, even though we're 600 miles away from each other. And so, you know, COVID, even though it was such a, it was a pandemic and it was a, a terrible thing, I think it was just this explosion of um, taking care of yourself, like you said, mental health matters, and mm -hmm. now access mental health in a better way. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with you. It it definitely opened the doors up for mental health um, to be virtual in the virtual world. And I feel like, too, sometimes that was, you know, a better way for them to even perhaps feel safer. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in my own home and I can still talk to a person of color. I can still connect with someone still looks like me, but I'm still in my space. You know, I trust my area where I'm in. I don't necessarily know, you know, where you are, but I feel, you know, comfortable because you do. You got to realize when it comes to trauma, like uh, people that we connect with, they don't 
necessarily they don't want to travel they don't want to go necessarily anywhere you know mm -hmm. they they can challenge themselves to do but their most um safe place is usually you know their safe secure place is usually going to be their home so i definitely saw a lot you know a lot of people are like oh you know it's messing with my um my work when COVID came but i didn't see a change when it yeah. came to like therapy yeah yeah, good stuff. So, Nicole, after pouring into clients all day and doing your thing as a mother and all of this, what are some stress reduction techniques that you currently utilize? How do you pour back into yourself? So, I am all about self care, um, self love. I will take a mental health day, you know, if, if I feel overwhelmed. Um, there's this one acronym again, like I said, I love acronyms. And so, there's this one, I don't know if you've heard of it either, that I always practice. Even me and my son, we joke about it. It's called HALTS. Have you ever heard of that? No. Okay. So, so HALT, obviously, it means, you know, stop, HALT. And mm -hmm. so, I do HALT every time um before i connect with anybody or before i do an activity and mm. so how it means you know you're going to ask yourself these questions am i hungry am i angry am i lonely am i tired and it's basically meeting those needs if i'm hungry first because sometimes i'm a foodie so we can cope with the food so i'm gonna first drink some water to make sure if i'm angry i'm gonna figure out you know where is that coming from i may not connect with someone um and may try to figure out can i do you know some type of um exercise or you know just something where i can get that energy out um if i'm lonely you know i'm a you know check in still with myself and may utilize a support um a healthy support at that and then if i'm tired then i'm going to you know get my sleep so we utilize halt because you know with seeing so many people there's so many um different stories so many different personalities and so i always make it a point and even between my sessions you know i've I'm a stickler, you know, I, I tell my people, hey, if I don't halt, you may not have a good session because, you know, I get sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I was here, you know, it may be like five minutes or so, you know, and I'm I'm letting them know, like, I'm human, too. I have to make sure that I'm I'm OK first before I'm I'm seeing the next person. So I do that. And obviously um, I'm a spontaneous person. So I'm doing other things such as I've, I've been skydiving like I'm I'm in between nature and um in between you know trying to find unique ways to get out adrenaline so with that and then with the halt that's usually what i do oh i love it i love the halt that yeah. is amazing yeah i'm gonna have to make sure that i start implementing and incorporating <laughs> that into my day i tell my clients i say um make sure you check yourself before you go check somebody else right okay so I, I like that <laughs> <laughs> so I tell them that first, make sure you are together and you're right before you go approach another person. Um, and so, but I like the whole is for a clinician to make sure that um, I'm taking inventory of myself before I go service the next person. So that was really good advice. I love yeah. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was another one recently, my son, you know, with his school, you know, mental health is 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 becoming such a huge thing, even in schools. And so they have a win Wednesday. It stands for what I need. I don't know. If you've heard that. Yeah. So I was like, OK, you know, I thought that was definitely good. So it's 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 really like you said it's the same thing is checking in with yourself first you you got to figure out w what are your emotions telling you if if you're not acknowledging your emotions they're going to scream your behaviors are going to change That's you're going right. to make a difference yeah yes nicole this has been like eating some really good soul food <laughs> today i just feel so warm and feel at home what else would you like to tell us what what would you want to make sure that we get out there that we haven't covered this morning? Um. I would just say, you know, I know that when you're connecting with a therapist, sometimes that could be something that's just, you know, scary because it's, it's, you know, a new person in your life. Um, but when it comes to that point in your life where you're starting to see the same things happen, you're starting to hear, you know, mm -hmm. the same things where people are like, you know, talking about like your behaviors and, you know, you feel as if you still don't necessarily, you know, know who you are, but you know that you want to see a change, like just reach out follow up with the therapist the the key thing i would say is make sure that you have a good rapport with them because all you know all experience with therapists if you if you can't connect with them you're not necessarily going to receive what you need to receive but it 
it's a, a simple thing. Like you said, now you can utilize it virtually. So it, it doesn't take a lot to connect and work on yourselves. Again, goes back to, you know, delete negativity, always challenge those negative thoughts, work on yourself, figure out what your purpose is in life and just flourish. Main thing. I love it. Good, good, good. Good information, good resources. I'll make sure that all of your information is pinned under your video. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to connect with us. Until next time, my goal for you, my wish for you is continue to be magical, be brave, and above all else, be well. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you.